we start with the puzzle. As a sliding ice block gets lighter, would we expect it to gain speed as it loses mass? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this nothing nerdy video on Newton's second law of motion. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. Newton's second law helps you to understand how forces work and also to calculate their sizes. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. Before we can use the second law of motion, we must first understand the concept of rate of change of momentum. So we start with the idea of momentum. When you multiply the mass and velocity of an object together, the resulting quantity is called momentum. Momentum is a vector represented by letter p. The p in this formula is underlined. This shows it is a vector and you can see that v is 2. Since the right and left sides of the formula must be the same, then the directions of p and v are the same too. As an example of momentum, this plane, made from a sheet of paper, is flying with a velocity of 8 metres per second to the left. We write the formula, substitute the values after converting the grams to kilograms, and calculate that the momentum at this moment is 0 0.040 kilogram metres per second. And we make clear that the momentum has a direction too. Momentum is a very useful quantity in physics. It is central to Newton's second law of motion, especially the idea of rate of change of momentum. Here again is the definition of momentum, which is also its formula. In IB physics, we are only concerned with the situation where the velocity changes, so this is the formula for a change in momentum in which the velocity changes. The change in momentum is the constant mass times the change in velocity. The rate of change of momentum means the change in momentum per unit time, and so we divide both the sides of the formula by delta t. Here now is the statement of Newton's second law, which uses the concept of rate of change of momentum. While the first law told us what forces do, this law helps us to measure the size of a force. The rate of change of the momentum of an object is a measure of the force acting on it. And the direction of the change of momentum is also the direction of the force. The second law uses the word proportional, which means that it is true for any units we use to measure the quantities of force, momentum and time. The SI unit of force is the Newton and it is defined so that the constant of proportionality in the formula is 1. That means that in SI units, the force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. A force of 1 newton causes a rate of change of momentum of 1 kilogram meter per second every second. Here is a calculation. The car accelerates to the right, changing its velocity from 10 to 45 meters per second in 5 seconds, and because we know its mass is 600 kilograms, we can make calculations about the momentum. At the start, the car has a momentum of 6,000, which increases to 27,000 kilogram meters per second. Now we can work out the change in momentum. And that is the difference between P2 and P1, which is 21,000 kilogram meters per second. Since we also know that the time taken to accelerate is 5 seconds, then we can find the rate of change of momentum. We divide the change, 21,000, by the time taken, which is 5 seconds. And the result is 4,200 kilogram meters per second squared, which is the same as a force of 4,200 newtons to the right. That is the force necessary to accelerate the car. Lastly, here is the justification for a well-known formula based on the second law. In SI units, the force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. And since in IB physics we are only concerned with changes in velocity, it can be written like this. 
maybe you recognize that formula of delta v divided by delta t. It is acceleration. And here is the well-known formula relating force, mass and acceleration, which shows that for a constant mass, the force and acceleration are proportional. F equals ma. Here is a numerical example. A stone is brought to a halt when it falls into sand. We know that it slows down from 60 to 0, but not if the deceleration is smooth, so we are calculating an average force. Firstly, using the formula for acceleration, we see that the average acceleration is minus 400 meters per second squared, and the negative sign means that the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the motion. In other words, it shows the stone slowing down to rest. When we substitute this number and the mass of the stone in the formula F equals ma, the result is minus 160 newtons. The meaning of the negative number is that the force opposes the falling motion and therefore the force vector acts upwards. In our answer we should make the direction clear. The question asks about rate of change of momentum and from Newton's second law we know that that is the same as the force and we must be interested in the resultant force here. So downwards the weight is approximately 300 because we take g to be 10. The upward force is 100 newtons and therefore the total force on the object is 200 newtons and a newton is the same as kilogram meters per second squared in the SI units and therefore the answer is d. The answer to this question is no, the block will not get faster. Although it is losing mass, the water it loses has a velocity, so it is also losing momentum at the same rate as it loses mass and will continue at the same speed if there are no unbalanced external forces such as friction acting. Okay.